Welcome to Equal Entertainment. I'm Tracy E. Gilchrist. The Marvels is suffering a blow at the box office. The Marvels opened with just $47 million, the lowest for any of the 33 previous Marvel films and the lowest in the last 15 years for Marvel. The previous low was for Ant-Man, which made $57.2 million in 2015. The $220 million film was the first MCU release directed by a black woman, and it's the first led by three women, Brie Larson, Tayana Paris, and Iman Vellani. However, despite the Marvels suffering from the inability of the actors to promote the film during the actor strike and the history of review bombing since Larson first appeared as Captain Marvel in her own film by fans angry that the superhero was made a woman, the Marvels did finish in first at the box office, ahead of Five Nights at Freddy's and Taylor Swift, the era's tour concert. Dwayne The Rock Johnson says the White House may be calling his name. Former wrestler and actor says multiple parties asked him to run in 2022. The Rock talked about his political aspirations while visiting Trevor Noah's new podcast, What Now? Noah mentioned a 2021 poll that showed 46% of U.S. adults would support The Rock as a presidential candidate. Johnson says he has no intention of running, but would consider the opportunity if the interest were strong enough. Former President and First Lady Obama were the surprise guests for a special screening of the new Netflix film Rustin at the HBCU First Look Film Festival. The film stars Coleman Domingo as civil rights icon Bayard Rustin. Rustin, a gay man, was the architect of the March on Washington in 1963. The Obamas executive produced the film with their Higher Ground production company. Domingo, who is an Out 100 honoree this year, attended the event along with director George C. Wolfe. They highlighted the importance of Rustin's life and work as an advocate. A Canadian jury has found fashion icon Peter Nygaard guilty of four counts of sexual assault. Five women accused him of attacking them over a three-decade period from the 1980s to the mid-2000s. A U.S. federal indictment filed in 2020 also accuses him of using his fashion business to conceal sex trafficking and other illegal activity. He's waiting potential extradition to the U.S. for those charges. Tiny Pretty Things actor Barton Cowperthwaite says he has stage 2 brain cancer. The star wrote on Instagram that he has a brain tumor the size of a lemon. It was discovered after suffering several seizures. He says he's scheduled for surgery in the next week or so. Cowperthwaite says he should be back to normal after that procedure and rehab. He warmed our hearts on season 12 of America's Got Talent and has risen up as a budding star in music. Johnny Manuel hails from Flint, Michigan and has a new EP out called Blue. Well, I want to ask you a little bit about Blue. Congratulations. And uh, what what would you say are some of your overarching kind of themes and inspiration for the songs on this EP? Yeah, I think a lot of the songs for this particular EP are about love. My first EP, Younger Skin, I was telling the story of my journey in music and how I've arrived at this point that I'm at now. And um, so I was really focused on that. And the second time around, we just went into the studio and just sort of organically let whatever we were feeling come out. And a lot of the songs ended up being about relationships and past situations that I'd had that I'd never really written about. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I think the overarching theme is like romantic love. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which I think is great. Um, it, yeah. It's really lovely. Uh, although I do want to talk about Molotov because you've spoken <laughs> about that one. And that yeah. is, um, I, I will paraphrase a quote, I think, but about, you know, burning burning old things to the ground and starting new, kind of, I guess, like a phoenix from the flames yeah. in some ways. Uh, would you talk about Molotov and, you know, the inspiration for that? Yeah, um, as I've said, I was, I've been in the industry for a long time. And I think I still had, even after Younger Skin, I still had residual things that I needed to dig up and talk about and work through. And Molotov for me was the igniting of all the things from my past that have been holding me back in ways in which people had, um, I don't know, gotten into my head. And mm -hmm. I really feel like I've healed from that stuff. Mm -hmm. And that that Molotov was sort of my send off to my past and all yeah. the things that were holding me down. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and when you're talking about people getting into your head, I'm 
I wonder if you would share as an artist what that what that kind of looked like uh, and kind of as a caution a caution to other people so that they can know what to look out for. Uh, I imagine it's people in the business telling you you're not going to succeed one way or maybe telling you not to be out or I imagine it's a bunch of those things, but I'd love to hear yeah. from you. Yeah. Definitely. Well, I got signed when I was 14 and from the time I was at Warner for five or six years and the entire time my sexuality was spoken about, I was told that I could never speak of it. I had to keep, you know, keep it inside and that I would never be able to achieve the sort of success that I was looking for if people knew, if they found out the secret. And so a lot of my career in the beginning and my life was spent hiding mm. um, who I am. And so, you know, arriving at a point where I understand now that that was, that just wasn't true. There were a lot of ways in which, you know, I just, I didn't feel truly nurtured as an artist and supported and um, yeah. And I'd never spoken about it. I'd never written about it. I, of course, in my personal life, I'd spoken to my friends and family about it, but I'd never written about it and never gotten it off my chest in this way. And so younger skin for that, uh, for me, was exactly that. And Molotov, like I said, was just that little residual nudge, and I needed to really get it off my chest before I could fully move forward. Move forward, yeah. Well, I'm sorry that happened to you because <laughs> they've been doing that to people for decades, and it's it's just yeah. not true. I mean, you look at Lil Nas X, and exactly, exactly. <laughs> people people break so through. Uh, I guess that's what I mean. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah, of yeah. Well, I also want to ask you a little bit about. Um, your visual style because your songs are also visual stories. Your, your videos are incredibly watchable. And would you talk a little bit about collaborating with creative teams on taking your songs to video and what that process is like for you? Yeah, of course. Um, so all of my videos creatively have been collaborated with Atypical Beings, mm -hmm. um, which is our creative team. And we, you know, we go through full, a full gamut of, finding things from the past that inspire us and things that were are inspiring us in the moment right now and where we're sort of looking to go. And uh, we draw from these things and always sit down together and create what I feel is something that is very true and honest to me and also represents the song really well and tells the story beautifully. Mm -hmm. um, I have, I've had a really great experience working with them and I'm very grateful that I have a team of people now that listen and understand and co-create. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Great. Well, you mentioned that, you know, the kind of overarching piece of blue is romantic love and mm -hmm. you are married to a man. This is um, yes. often could be, you know, we imagine you're talking about queer love uh, yeah. and that is really meaningful to people who maybe don't have songs that they think apply to them. And so would you talk a little bit about what it means to you to be able to create that work and share that with people who may need it? Yeah, definitely. I, it's what I needed when I was growing up, yeah. right? Like I looked for that and I looked to other artists to tell the stories that I wanted to hear about the sort of love that I was experiencing. And I'm hoping that that's what my music does for a lot of people. I've definitely gotten, received beautiful messages across social media about that exact thing and how, um, you know, me being out and speaking about it constantly, I'm a very proud queer artist and um, me speaking about that, how it's helped. And um, I was lucky enough to find love here in Australia in 2018. And I'm now married to the um, man that I met here in 2018. And so a lot of what I write about when it comes to romantic love is inspired by my relationship. Yeah. in my home life and um yeah i'm just in a very happy place and i'm writing about it and it makes me feel great renowned vocal group il divo is ready for the holiday season they've added stephen lubry to the group and have a new holiday album out now lubry says il divo is ready to spread some holiday cheer coming out with a christmas ep we have recorded mm -hmm. four 
our new Christmas songs that I know everyone's going to love. Uh, it will bring that Christmas nostalgia, holiday nostalgia uh, into everyone's hearts. So uh, that'll be coming out this fall. And they, those songs will be included in our Christmas tour, which will happen in the U.S. Uh, so check out ildevo.com and you'll find all of those tour dates, um, you know, all the ones overseas and also the ones in uh, the Christmas songs in the U.S. So I think uh, there is a lot to look forward to. You can watch the Advocate channel live by downloading our app in the Apple or Google Play Store. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel. For the Advocate channel, I'm Tracy E. Gilchrist. Thank you for watching.